ahead, we've drawn a little circle here. And before we begin, we have to review just briefly. The distance around a circle is called its circumference. All right? And it's always denoted with a capital C. Now, it turns out that if you know how far it is across the circle, you can always find the distance around. All you have to do is multiply it by pi. So the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter of a circle. That's going to be very, very important in this formula. All right, now, as we've seen before in the prior videos, the ancient Greeks, when they were trying to find the areas of triangles and trapezoids and parallelograms, they turned them into other shapes that were easier to work with. Now, when they came upon the circle, they really had the ultimate challenge. Because here you have a continuous curve. And somehow they had to get rid of the continuous curve and turn this figure into something that they could actually measure a base and a height from. And so, now we have asked our volunteer to come and help us. So volunteer, would you please join us? We're going to take this circle. And my volunteer, this beautiful young lady here, is going to cut along each of these segments until we get eight equal pieces. And as you do this, young lady, I would like you to please hand the pieces to me. And I will pretend like I'm a Greek, and I will go ahead and I will morph this thing into something that we can find the area of. Yeah, it's Math Mixer. Everybody loves math. Gotta love the teacher. Could that be Miss Lowry? She'll teach you two plus two and crazy formulas. You'll be going home to mom and dad saying, yo, I love math and the teach is hot. She got me memorizing algorithms. I'll be up all night. The eight looks a little bit like a wiggly worm to me. But the ancient Greeks got so stinking excited because they said, whoa, look at this. We can turn this into a parallelogram. Now, being uh, that I'm not really ancient Greek, I began to think, all right, they're a little bit on the wacko side. I can see we've got one set of parallel sides at this point, right? But there ain't no way that's parallel. Those aren't even straight, right? So let me go ahead and just go, I'm going to draw what the Greeks were thinking they saw. Estimating side here. Now, but let's just for, just for fun, let's go ahead and say, what if this was straight? How high would the parallelogram be? So let me take my little ruler. Let me go ahead and drop a perpendicular like we always do. Anybody out there that can tell me how long that is? It's a part of the circle, the original circle. We can remember back to the original circle. It's a part of that circle. Radius. Yes! Do you all see that? This is the radius. From that tip out here to, to there is exactly R. If those little bumps were not on the top and the bottom, we would actually have a parallelogram. And we could find its area by just base times height. The bumps didn't worry the Greeks, though. They just did a bit of magic. They knew they could take the pieces and cut them into smaller pieces. And as they would do that, something really cool would happen. By cutting an eighth and half, you get a sixteenth. Now look at the difference. On an eighth, you've got quite a bit of arc. On a sixteenth, it's much less drastic. There is a sixteenth of arc, or no, <clears throat> yeah, this is a sixteenth of arc. Now, that is a thirty-second of arc. Is that straighter? Yes. What if I cut it again into sixty-four? Do you think it would be even straighter? Yes. And what if I went into one twenty-eight? Would it be even straighter? Oh my God. All right. If we make those little wedges skinnier and skinnier and skinnier and skinnier, we will eventually get to the parallelogram, or if we were just using straight segments, we'd actually get to a rectangle. Okay. Four of 
the eight arcs are on the top, four of the eight arcs are on the bottom. So the length of this is just half the circumference. Does that make sense? No. Yes. Okay. This is equal to half the circumference of the original circle. Everything depends on you understanding that. Oh, okay. You see that? Yeah. Because we have the four arcs down here. Of the circle is therefore going to be one half C, the base times the height, which is R. So wait. So you're saying that But it's gonna get easier. We're wait, 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 wait. Down even more. You're saying like with the half C is half the circle, right? No, I'm saying it's half the circumference. It's just well, that yeah. Part, right? Okay, so it's yeah, all right. Okay. All right, now we want to get this thing as simple as possible. And we're assuming that there might be some people out there who do not know C automatically. They think it's just a variable. They don't realize that we mean it to mean pi times the diameter. So we're actually going to put pi times the diameter into this formula. So underneath C, I am now going to write pi times the diameter because that's what the circumference of any circle is. And then I'll bring down the R. Okay, you with me? All right, now, think about it. We can make this even simpler. A diameter is how many radii? Yes, it's two. So, look, I can write this as one half times pi times the diameter, which would be two radii and then times the height of r, okay? Now, all we have to do is clean this up algebraically. Now, in mathematics, are you allowed to multiply things in any order? Yes. Is one times two the same thing as two times one? Yes. 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 So I am allowed to rearrange this. That's called the commutative property for multiplication. So I'm going to bring this 2, and I'm going to put it over here beside the 1 half. Watch. 1 half times 2 times pi times r times the other r. Woo. Now, what's half of 2? 1. Excellent. So this is really 1 times pi times... Now, what's another way of saying r times r? R to the second power. Excellent. r to the second. All right. What's 1 times pi? Pi. So, holy to moly, look. The simplest I can get this is pi r squared. Pi times r squared. That is going to be the area of any circle in the world. Pi times radius Squared. Always, always, always works because the Greeks had the, the smarts to divide a circle up into a It's math mixer. Everybody loves math. Gotta love the teacher.